the promise that we made to the people of Sarawak wasn't so much of just extra revenue, but more of a decentralization or autonomy back to the state. So that the state can in itself take responsibility over, in my view, two very critical, if not the most critical departments in the state, of education and healthcare. I, I don't believe it was a U-turn. Because if you look at um, the, the deal that was offered in context, and I actually can provide with you the, the deal letter, it clearly says that the extra 20% and 50% is to borne the fiscal repris uh, responsibility of education and healthcare. Um, a lot of people throw the blame at uh, the West Malaysians that uh, allegedly stole our rights, uh, infringe our rights, take our resources and then everything. But the reality is this, uh, this Barisan National Strava, oh, they have rebranded themselves to GPS, they were accomplice of all this. I mean, the oil rights were signed away by them in 1974. Um, the Territorial Sea Act was passed in 2012 to limit our, our, our authority to the continental shelf to three nautical miles. It was passed and even tabled by, by this, uh, this so-called uh, local parties. And then over the years, all these infringements were done with full knowledge of them and full support of these people. So now when they, uh, when they lost the elections, they need to find reasons to rebrand themselves and make themselves relevant to the people of Sarawak. So they started to champion these rights when the fact is they were part of the problem, they were the source of the problem and they were accomplished to whatever happened before. Well, I understand the disappointments uh, by the people. Uh, I understand the uh, discontentment uh, because it, it's not stem out from, uh, it's, it's, there is basis to where it came from, especially if you look at it as a context of over the years that Sarawak has been um, has been sidelined by the previous administration for 50 to 60 years. So there is uh, high expectations with the new government coming in that uh, these things can be rectified and obviously to be rectified immediately. However, as I said, uh, we inherited a, a broken system. So sometimes it takes time for us to repair. And uh, while I share, while I, while I understand the disappointments, uh, but then we are now working very hard um, with the new government to make sure um, we correct what is right, as well as uh, to, get a, to get a good deal. I think uh, one of the things that Sarawak really needs is uh, uh, greater development funds because uh, due to, um, of course, alleged corruption, alleged wastage and alleged uh, negligence by the state government, um, we and of course Barisan National as a whole, uh, Sarawak is uh, behind in uh, basic development. A lot of mm -hmm. villages are lacking of uh, supply of electricity and water. This is not just unfair and unjust to the people of Sarawak. This will actually uh, affect the quality of healthcare provided to the people of Sarawak. So this happened, this is not an issue that just happened. This is a chronic issue that has been prolonging for the past 10 to 20 years under the watchful, so-called watchful eyes of the previous Barisan National Government. So, so in, in view of that, we need greater, uh, of course, attention by the federal government as well as greater allocation into addressing these issues, not just in the healthcare industry, but also in, in education. Mm -hmm.